It's your main man, Andrew Wood, coming back again. And by request, I'm going to be doing a review of the original World of Darkness product, Changeling the Dreaming. And I'm not just going to be talking about this base book here, but I'll predominantly be talking about that. I'm also going to explore the entire line. Now, one time I owned just about everything for this line, except for a few of the books for um, settings, the different setting books and modules and stuff like that. I don't like modules. I don't run them, and I don't have much interest in other people's ideas for settings. If you explain the concept to me, I, I can make all my own NPCs and, and settings and so forth. So I find that those sort of books very uh, boring to read, tedious, and a complete waste of money. However, I bought the majority of this, and that's just kind of because I, I did sort of a sick collecting thing on White Wolf for a while outside of the Hunter the Reckoning line, which I only bought the books as seeing the other Supernatural Super Hunters lines. Uh, but I thought uh, this book right here, which originally retailed for $25. There's a second edition of this, which is hardcover. Uh, I used to have that one. In fact, now I own, this is the only book from Changing the Dreaming I have. It's, I think it's the only one I still have. Um, it's because I don't like the game. I don't like it at all, I think. Aside from Hunter the Reckoning, it was the worst of the standalone games that White Wolf put out, and by a huge margin. Uh, I would put uh, the next one down as Werewolf, and we're much, much, much better than this. Now, this game... Uh, the high point of it, the best point of this book, this game line, is this. The art. It's beautiful. It's full color. It's wonderful art. The best art of any of the original World of Darkness products. Wonderful art. Here's the... And, you know, you can see every page, full color. One problem. It is a World of Darkness book. That shit look gothic to you? That shit looked horrifying. It looked scary. Before this book came out, I was playing World of Darkness. I was new to that game uh, when it first came out. And I remember people talking about changing. Oh, and we would speculate. You know, we would talk. And then the gaming circles, what's it going to be? And how gothic, how horrible. Oh, my God, how monstrous and alien is a book about changelings going to be? You know, we're blown away with what they've done with some previous products. So, gosh, they're going to they're gonna hit a home run on changelings. How could they not? What an easy product. And they give us something that's Peter Pan, the Sandman, Labyrinth. Uh, that's what this book is. That's the kind of story it tells. And I love the movie Labyrinth. It might be my favorite movie. I love that movie. It's not something I think would make for a very good game. And it doesn't! This game, um, I played it two different times. One was only two sessions, and the Game Master was horrible. The second one, the Game Master was decent, and uh, it lasted a few game sessions. You know, We had some fairly... One of the other players is good. Two of the other players weren't good. Uh, one of them was really horrible. But that that really has nothing to do with it. It's just the overall concept of what you're doing, what you're playing, how the game is. And this. Never, never grow up. I'm a grown-ass man. I do not want to play a child. I don't want to play something that is childish. When I was fucking ten, I didn't want to play a kid. I didn't want to do it. I mean, this is there's a lot of snarf-ass shit in this game, if you get what I'm talking about. And I've never liked that, ever. Not when I was five, not now. Another problem with this particular book is this. When you're paying, you pay for, as you will see, to me this is utterly worthless. I've never tried to read what was on those lines. I had no interest in reading it. And mostly the fiction in White Wolf is fucking horrible. It's bad. Uh, I've read a good amount of it in the other books. And this full color artwork, 25 pages or so, that is a lot of money. That is a large contributing piece of this $25 here. I would much rather have had an extra 25 pages that they dumped into some other book, put in this book. Give me more details. Give me more information. But no, no, I get I get this. That's trash. Come on now. You, you know, you pay good money. Publishers of role-playing games, do not put garbage in your book. Do not do it. Not acceptable. Uh... You know, there's also some, some black and white art in here, like uh, that's very good too, like uh, that particular picture there. The characters are basically this. You are born as a normal person, kind of normal at any rate. You have the blood of fairies running through you. You are a changeling. You go through a chrysalis and awaken one day and learn that there's all sorts of invisible things running around there. You know, it really takes a lot from... Uh, the little kid's idea of, I have an invisible friend. That is repeated over and over again in this game. That is something I don't like. And it definitely doesn't work in, you know, the World of Darkness. I was looking for very dark, very horrendous fairy lore. You know, cannibalism, rape, 
child abduction, child sacrifice. These are the sort of themes that, you know, I, I'm looking at when I'm thinking about fairies. I'm not thinking about Alice in Wonderland and shit like that. I'm thinking about the really dark grim. When I'm looking at it through the world's words of, of well, the words, world of darkness, I think of really grim, horrible ideas. And those are the topics they touch on in Changing the Lost. Some really disturbing stuff in that book. And I'm rather critical of the New World of Darkness line, but Changing the Lost, uh, so much better than this book, it's, it's absurd. And they, they really came close. The, I don't know if they supported in Changing the Lost, but the one problem there is, with me, when I look at the game, I don't really want to play the, the abused freak over here. I want to play <laughs> the other guy, the, the fairies. That's where the kind of fairies, more if I at least if I understand it, have an understanding of the game, which is not known, that I was looking for here. And you do not find them. You do not find them at all. Um, you know, there, there, there are a few ways you can really take it and make the game dark. But man, I mean, it's it's just hard to establish mood and tone. And that's what's so wonderful about the World of Darkness line. The mood, the tone, the texture is already there. When you pick the book up, you get in sync. And man, you really, you're, you're working against it with, with this particular book here. They have a number of interesting backgrounds. They have something called Chimera, which be anything from, you know, like a dragon. You could ride around onto a, a sword. You know, you could be running around with nothing in your hand, swinging it like that, and you're just desecrating that fairy over there because that fairy has a really high glamour, a very low banality. If you had a high banality, you're swinging nothing at me, man. Nothing doesn't hurt. However, with that with that low banality, he knows that there is something there, something spun of the stuff of dreams and the things in dreams, just like they say, if you die in a dream, you can die for real. And that sort of principle takes place because you're essentially walking around in a living dream, seeing things that may or may not really be there. Um, you know, the game... It's supported in such a way, with just a little bit of tweaking, you know, you could play a game of insane people. None of this shit is real, period. But you think it is. That could very easily be run off of this game, which, if you run it up for a long time and suddenly drop hints, and I think that would probably be the best use of actually getting a very disturbing game out of this. Um, you know, that everyone is in the group is highly psychotic and just sharing this mass hysteria. I think that could work quite well, uh, particularly when... You know, they've actually killed real people multiple times that they thought were something else, you know, mazes and monsters style. Uh, the kiths of this book are, let me show you the pictures of them. The Bogans. Here are the Bogans. If you want to know what I think about Bogans, see my video on halflings. It's the same fucking thing. The issue... Africa has a wonderful and interesting rich tradition of fairies and magical things like that. But they put the issue in there. <laughs> it's fucking horrible. Uh, they were so stock and bland. To me, they seem like really slow-moving silent striders. Uh, they were both out, both right out of Africa. Um, not particularly uh, original there. The knockers, which I would have, if I had made them, I really don't like the way they look, uh, first of all. They're kind of like Tinker Gnomes from Kryn, the Dragonlance setting. They, fairies, if you look at it, you know, with all, uh, We'll look at the mythology of fairies. What really are fairies? Well, there's a there's a, a bunch of ideas, but one of them are aliens. Another one is angels. And the knockers are something I would have really played the alien aspect up on, really pushed towards that kind of like, wait a minute, you know, where where are these things coming from? What is this other dimension of the astral? This uh, Arcadia, this dreaming, and you know what? You know where 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 are these things coming from? What what's going on here? Um, again, I've said I played twice. One time I played, I played a Puka, and uh, it's probably hard for most of you to imagine. I was, I had a whopping one dot of strength, and you have to have one dot of strength. I had four dodge, which dodge is so goddamn worthless skill in World of Darkness. But I took it, because, yeah, you know, that was what I needed for the character. And he was a musician. I took the wings, merit. he was a dragonfly Puka. And, you know, it, it, it worked okay. Um, if I ever play the game again, oh, this would be what I'd be playing. A red cap. Didn't get to play one of them. I use those in my Dungeons and Dragons game. I really like red caps. I like the mythology and the lore behind them. I don't use the D&D red caps because they're fucking horrible. I, you know, I have my own deal I do with them. But basically think about a fairy version of a goddamn great white shark that can eat anything. Or a megalomouth shark. I guess they really can eat anything. Like right on down. What am I eating? A car? A person? You know, uh, your mom's cooking. Whatever it is, a red cap's going to put it down that gullet. They don't give a damn. Right into the Gouye, and uh, they're quite neat, and they're, they're red, it's, you know, it's from blood. So they're, they're the dark ones, you know, they're, they're, as my son was a little bit cool, and uh, quite interesting. The other time I played, actually the first time I played, I played a Seder, the game was fucking horrible. 
complimented the gentleman gamer in the comments on his his uh, game he ran runs for for Brady and I about portraying devils very well because the devils are supposed to fuck you. They always fuck you. They force you to deal with them and then they fail. That's how a devil's supposed to be run. That's what's supposed to happen. If the game master doesn't achieve that, the game master's really fucked up. You know, they just didn't portray the devils well. The devils are supposed to be so many steps ahead of you. It's ridiculous because. Um, you know, they've been doing this shit well before your race has even thought of. So, unfortunately, sometimes you beat the Devils, and you beat them real bad. It's just a good player beating the Game Master. I love to watch Game Master play Devils. I think it's very fascinating, interesting, the intricacy of them, the temptation angles. I'm going to jump to get involved with that. No problem doing that in a game. However, when I win, and not win a little bit, I don't know. When I just broke all the goddamn records in the world, I think by the end, I think my character probably had about 20 dots and everything you could imagine on the character sheet, and that's the end of the second game session, which I don't think went that long. I, I After I just completely bent over right this, this devil, you know, I think it was basically Satan, he had to show up, and uh wasn't trying to, didn't want to do that, he just, I named Toad Marshall Yada, he was the balls. Absolutely a horrible idea, don't call upon things you shouldn't play with, and sometimes that can just be thing you shouldn't be role playing with. Uh, it was absolutely just dreadful. Uh, one of the interesting things about the EV fairies is that they get extra dots. You know, you get your normal dots to make the character like seven five three, but you know they get extra points to put into stats. Like, um, and and they can go they can go into like sixes or even sevens in in, in their stats, which is which is really kind of cool because it helps you know uh, separate them, establish them differently. Here are the sheep. Um, I thought they made them way too Tolkien-esque. They were very, very, very Tolkien, and she can be kind of maybe done like that, but they can be done in some other ways too. And I thought they'd be a lot more interesting if they were done uh, a little bit, a little bit different. The she, however, has something on birthright called on beauty, and they all receive birthrights and they all receive frailties. They basically, have you know their strength and their weakness, and they get two extra dots of appearance. So she brought her like a seven appearance, which is you know pretty, pretty awesome. Um, they have uh, the the Shlua, and the Shlua are, you know, they have the worst frailty of anything I've ever seen. It's the worst flaw I have ever seen in a game because this... However, when you are losing your voice over a role-playing game, you know, that's a really bad thing. So you can either do that or you can completely no-sell their flaw, which completely destroys the believability of a guy who's going around. So, you know, it fucks you both ways. And I really, uh, I, thought, I thought they were actually very interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah. You have trolls. Trolls are done in a very good design. Look very much like frost giants. They're quite interesting. Quite orderly, and along with the she, sort of comprise the nobility of uh, the fairies. Um, and I can really talk a lot about it in this thing. This video is starting to go long already, and you, know, you can see, you know, houses here. Uh, so some, some of that artwork. Um, <clears throat> of course, it uses the, the, the standard things here. I'll show you, show you a character sheet here. Uh, basically, one of the things that's a really big problem in this banality is basically someone could get a hold of one of them, and like I was saying earlier, saying that, in fact, they really were crazy, but they try to say, okay, you guys are crazy, you guys are schizophrenic, or, or otherwise deluded, and a psychologist, for example, might have like a tin banality, and would be an autumn person just, just hammering away at their glamour, hammering away at their belief in themselves, and causing their own uh, banality to raise, and that, that can really screw them over a lot. Of course, they're fairies, so they're also horribly uh, susceptible to cold iron. So, you know, that, that's another thing in the game. They have magic. They have uh, arts, cantrips, monks, and realms that play into it. So, basically, you know, you really want to act it out. Well, I always encourage people to do it in, game, in Dungeon Dragons. In fact, you know, in my game, you can't act in your shit out and doing it the same way every time. You're just standing there wasting your turn because nothing happens. You have to bring that level of role playing to it. Absolutely, you know, unexcusable if, if you don't, you know, if you don't do that. Um, it's just bad on you and your game. So, 
they encourage you to do that, and uh, they give you some kind of effect in here, extra, if you, you know, you make some kind of motion. This one turd we played with, like, I did a mind trick. It's like an um, And, you know, you get in there and really create something kind of interesting you're doing to describe how you actually cast the spell. Uh, which is kind of neat. And they have some interesting effects. They seemed a little on the unbalanced side to me. Some of them seemed a good bit, as, uh, well, just from having played and just remembering this now, they seem quite a bit more powerful than others. The game uh, plays a, a little, you know, and it has it has the potential to have a lot of politics in the game. It has the potential to have the sword and sorcery style. We're running around fighting Chimera, fighting the, un it has the Celian, the Unsealian, the Shadow Court. And in fact, that book, God, I paid like 40 bucks on a while the Shadow Court. Um, normally expensive book. The books from this line, when I bought them, are still pretty damn expensive. That was quite a long time ago. Um, and uh, they kind of went up in value because I think a lot of them had very limited prints. And from what I understand, this game apparently had a following of people who just like to buy the books and put them on their shelves and not play the game, which to me is uh, weird. You know, no need for role-playing game books if, you know, if you're not going to ever engage in the system. If you're not going to be able to get books, you fucking sell them. Um, you know, this, this, this game has a lot of, um, you know, different, di different things you can do with it in that, that term. You have your chimera, you know, your, your monsters, things like that are dragons. You can play the quest where you go and hunt a dragon down. But overall, it really borrowed a lot from Age and Werewolf to kind of put them together, you know, with that party feel. Uh, werewolf has party, party with swords, you know, it has a very much a Dungeons and Dragons in the real world kind of feel to it, and it tries to have that politics, you know, they have their, their trods, their little fairy paths that come very close to being like um, the moon bridges, you know, they have their freeholds, which I think are supposed to be uh, nodes, I think it's the same thing, they have uh, a, a, a lot of things that, that really kind of heavily borrowed on, on those two games. One of the big problems with the Old World of Darkness line is they kind of started really repeating themselves, you know, from some of the games. It's kind of difficult to tell. Well, why did why is he that instead of this, you know? And uh, to me, I don't really like that. You can play as like a childing in here, which is like a, a kid that wakes up and, you know, someone else can make a grump, and which is an adult, and you kind of have the same skill points, which is astronomically stupid. Um, you know, when you're when you're 40 and when you're 10, you do not have the same number of skill points. And if you do, you wasted your fucking life. Um, so that you know that that's something that uh, yeah, I also, also had a problem with there. And in, in, in the game, they uh, overall, I would definitely not recommend the game. Would not recommend you getting into it. Not, not recommend you buying it. There's many many good role playing games out there. This is not one of them. It is happy, cheery, sunshine, fun times in the world of darkness.